Hey guys, do you still remember me? Okay, so I'm sorry that I haven't posted in like a really long time. I mean like in my defense, I've kind of been posting shorts, but let's be real, like that's pretty much the bare minimum for a YouTuber. So what exactly have I been up to? I can't actually announce that yet. But I swear, I'm, I'm working on something. I haven't just been lazing around and sitting on my couch all day. Okay, there's been a bit of that, but I'm working on something. Now, considering I've decided to be all mysterious and cagey, I thought this would be a good opportunity to take you guys through all of the offset projects I started, but invariably scrapped and forgot about. Starting with this. The Aberrant. Man, I had such high hopes for this yo-yo when I first began. I remember when I first started yo-yoing, one of my favorite yo-yo players was Eric Koloski. And his signature yo-yo was a yo-yo called the New Breed. I love this yo-yo. Like, it was wide, it had rims that overhang. It, it was a really nice, pleasant, fun yo-yo. And, and what I wanted was I wanted something like this, but fully out of metal and recontextualized for like, the modern era. There was just one problem. They, they had a little bit of vibe. I mean, you could kind of fix it, but then slowly but surely, it would vibe again. This yo-yo design failed so cataclysmically that when we tried revisiting the design in a monumental version, it vibed ridiculously as well. I kind of lost taste for the project and scrapped it all together and basically forgot about it. Now my next scrapped project, well, now, the Outlier 3, this was one of, if not our best selling yo yo. Right, Alan? You're tuning them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it would make sense that we updated the Deviant to kind of match that design. So that's the Outlier 3. Here is the Outlier 3 Deviant version. Here's just a normal Deviant. This design right here it was promising but the modifications that we did to transition from the outlier 2 to the outlier 3 when we translated those over to a mono metal version you end up with something that's kind of like floaty and light and pleasant and fun and that's not the direction we want for a deviant the deviant is the mono metal version of the bimetal that's very competition based and very powerful speaking of deviant failures I thought it'd be like a hilarious joke to make like a designer looking deviant. I had like this whole big YouTube idea around it, but the video kind of flopped, but not after we made not one, not two, but three Vucci themed deviants, all of which were very expensive to prototype. And I don't know, I just didn't feel like getting a cease and desist letter from Gucci, so I bailed. This one, I scrapped it. It was complete failure. Wasn't even funny, no one wanted it. I still think it has potential there, but I've let it go for now. There's been a bunch of projects that we've started and promptly forgot about. But all of these yo-yos aren't the one I'm referring to when I say the yo-yo that literally everybody forgot about. Aw, oh, look at this. This, guys, is the thesis yo-yos slash offset yo-yos. Collab. Back in 2021, I collaborated with Thesis Yo-Yos to create this yo-yo, the Omniscient. Right now, within that design, there was also a mono metal. Whoa, look at that. This is gonna be the mono metal version. The Omniscient, we sold those out, and then it was a thing, and then it was over. We prototyped the mono metal. We would we said we would one day release the mono metal, but we never did. But the mono metal is now the yo-yo that everyone has forgot about it. It's kind of reminiscent of the Omniscient. Which is why I thought it'd be a fun idea to call it the Reminiscent, you know? Like, you kind of remember it, because it looks familiar to something you kind of remember, but you're not quite sure where to put... No? No? Re reminiscent? I, I think that's a great name. So these, these are fully ready to go. We have silver reminiscent, we have royal blue reminiscence, and we also have these copper reminiscence. And there you are! Alan, right, take a break for a second. Show me your like most complicated technical combo. I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. I missed the end. What? You missed that? Oh, oh, Chris 
interested in getting this yo-yo, the Reminiscent, it's going for 45 USD and we're going to be dropping them on the Offset Yo-Yo website right now, as soon as you're watching this video. See you, dude. Alright, right, All right, see you soon. Time to go out to practice today. Alright. You know, one weakness that I've realized we have at Offset Yo-Yos is that all of the Yo-Yos we release are predominantly like angular Yo-Yos. And this is probably my fault, it's because I like angular Yo-Yos. Like all the big names when I was like a Yo-Yo kid coming up used angular Yo-Yos. Like Hiroki Suzuki used an angular Yo-Yo, Christopher Chia, Shinya Kido, Marcus Ko sort of like everybody seemed to use angular yo-yos because that was what was accommodating for like those crazy fast tricks or those horizontal tricks or or any of the the real competitive style at the time now there was a brief phase in 2016 where i kind of got into like rounded technical style yo-yoing and that was well because of Takeshi. When Takeshi yo-yos, the entire world seems to kind of stop and they pay attention to what he's doing because his tricks, they have like a sense of complexity, a sense of elegance, and they score really high as well. There's just something about his tricks that like captivate everybody. And he was always a good yo-yo player, but he had a brief period in like 2014 where he was like the yo-yo player. Everybody wanted to play like Takeshi, myself included. And there was a brief phase, but a phase nevertheless, where I got really into like learning Takeshi's yo-yo tricks. And for like the first time, like the angular, biometal, really powerful, good for horizontal yo-yos I was using, didn't really feel like a good fit. Takeshi has a lot of tricks where the yo-yo is moving in and out of a lot of strings, is moving in and out of intricate mounts. And if you're using something really flared out and wide, it just doesn't really lend itself well to that. So in, in that phase, I started using a lot of rounded yo-yos and I kind of got a taste as to why players who do a lot of intricate tech like to use yo-yos like that. And that was really my goal when making something like the Omniscient or the Reminiscent. It was having something rounded so it was comfy in the hand and be good for string rejections. Something that was like really stable and something that could spin long so you could do those intricate tech tricks. Now I will admit, I don't really play like that anymore. I'm not really good at playing like that. And to be perfectly honest with you, it doesn't even score in competitions anymore. But, but for that style of yo-yoing, that technical, complicated, high trick density kind of style, that's what the Reminiscence designed for. Not gonna lie, that took me a lot longer to land than I thought it would.